Here's a TV that looks oh! Oh! I almost didn't want to credit the White House's round table meeting with video game executives and critics with a response. It doesn't really bloody deserve one, does it? Bowman! I mean, that video clip is just part of a montage the White House put out on its YouTube channel and then hurriedly delisted, ha ha ha, trying to imply, oh so subtly, that video games cause mass shootings. I mean, that was just hitting someone with a big stick. Bowman! People throwing knives or axes at each other, doing stabbings and stuff. Not a lot of mass shootings, actually. Uh, the gun violence in it is certainly nowhere near as bad as some other footage we'll be showing from a different medium. And that's where I have to tell you that today's episode contains some disturbing imagery. Also, I must warn you that today's video contains political opinion. My political opinion. Which, if you're watching this on YouTube, there's a very good chance it's quite different from your political opinion. Bowman! You're still watching it, aren't you? You're still watching it because you want to get mad this morning. I warned you, so it's not my fault if you get upset. But Donald Trump really is a prick. The 90s have returned as video game violence is back in the spotlight. While this may throw us back to happier days of, say, the Spice Girls, Konami being good, and smiley faces on fucking everything, we also have to deal with the grim side of the neon decade. I'm talking, of course, about Peter Andre. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, hysteria over media violence. Mass shootings keep happening in America. The latest prominent one, and yes, they can be ranked by media prominence now due to their frequency, being the massacre at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. They don't keep happening anywhere else, any other countries, which may lead a poor soul to look at unique things happening in this particular society. Like, these are just personal ideas, but it seems to me it may be more useful to examine the belief that men can't express themselves unless through violence, or the ease of gun access and the deep-seated influence of the National Rifle Association. I mean, it's just a thought, right? I'm simply suggesting that if I walked into a school with an AR-15 in my hands, I'd have a much better chance of shooting a lot of people with it than if I turned up clutching a beaten up copy of Jack and fucking Daxter. But I won't say any more than that because I'll see half a dozen YouTube comments claiming, oh no, a British person is trying to take my guns away again, like fucking tool bags. Mortal Kombat is generally acknowledged to be the source of the first significant uproar, its brutal fatalities and gory gameplay shocked politicians of the day, prompt the industry to protect itself from exterior regulation by creating the Entertainment Software Ratings Board, and using that to slap parental guidelines on game boxes. This satisfied many would-be regulators, but self-elected societal champions like aching nobody Jack Thompson would keep the fight going for years, latching onto Grand Theft Auto as the be-all end-all of America's violent amusement. While parasitic non-entities like Thompson would keep yelling for attention at an ever-dwindling audience, some politicians would renew their interest in the mid 2000s Thousands. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Terminator star and massive hypocrite, helped to waste buckets of taxpayer money trying to restrict video game sales in ways that ended up cementing their First Amendment rights, while state senator and complete arsehead Leland Yee was obsessed with controlling violent content in video games right up until he was arrested for gun trafficking in 2016. Oops. This time though, the big government that pretends to hate big government is prepared to step in and govern us. Bigly. Or at least they put on a show of preparation. Several elected officials have chimed in with nonsensical notions about how to end mass shootings, while simultaneously collecting big comical bags with dollar signs on them from an NRA they're sworn to protect. More important is the involvement of a citrus tyrant who currently lives in the White House and spends most of his days golfing and tweeting. Donaldus Trumpington, our dithering and angry king of America, has decided to embrace the video game violence debate lovingly, in a way which has totally nothing to do with the 30 
$30 million he got from the NRA during his campaign to win the Iron Throne. Self-identifying gamers who supported Donald Trump are starting to realise that actual real-life consequences came attached with voting a walking meme into office. And they just all seem a bit sad and confused at the moment, while the White House itself is passing around fully contextualised and not at all sensationalist videos like these. Shit. <laughs> Bowman! Now, personally, I believe the 24-hour mainstream news industry, with its glossy and wowing coverage of violence, could be more responsible for shaping society's views just a tad bit for the worst. But rather than give you any solid reasoning why I think that, I'm just going to cherry-pick some footage and present you this fully contextualised and not at all sensationalist video. Please don't. Please don't. Please. Duke fires wildly. The groups of rebels are still on the streets and resisting. Gavin Hewitt, BBC News. Where the protests were centered in Tehran and millions of people took to the streets, these protests have been scattered across the entire country and smaller in size. All right, time now for some campus craziness spiraling out of control this year. Now those are single shots. My name is Mel Bernstein and they call me the most armed man in America. But I think I'm going to set the car on fire. One of the officers reportedly saw the driver with a lighter in his hand. So, fun fact, we were going to have a lot more of an in-depth montage here, but it turned out that the footage that is used in mainstream news is actually a bit too disturbing for this show. This show where I sometimes play with a giant dildo baseball bat and wear a bird skull mask and have sex with pogs. Once it got to the police brutality and people writhing about on fire, both my art director and I were a little bit alarmed at the real-life violent imagery that the news media quite happily and casually throws up 24-7. This is, of course, when they're not plastering the television with images of mass shooters, many of whom wanted attention, and get not just attention, but immortalization on these fucking programs. And then these bastards have the absolute friggin' nerve to blame video games. Maybe as a society we have to talk about what numbing ourselves to this very graphic violence. It's not, it's not like cartoon. Fuck yeah, I agree on that actually. Oh wait, you were talking about bloody video games, not the news. The news, where you desensitize us to violent imagery 24 hours a day. Oh shut up Tucker Carlson, you fucking knob. If there's one thing I've learned about video editing after over a decade in the game, it's that editing is like magic. Provided you have the components for the spell to work, the raw footage, all you need to do is selectively chop and edit to tell any story you want. It's through this magic that I make myself look barely competent at playing video games instead of tragically pathetically awful. But the White House can create grander illusions than mere video montages, with its latest trick being able to convince the world it's serious about media violence by doing fucking nothing in the Roosevelt Room. You see, self-proclaimed sexual misconductor Prime Minister Donkey Tremp is gravely concerned about violent video games, which he lets his son play so he knows they're bad. He is so steamed about this issue and so thoroughly well informed that he suggested games ought to be subject to a rating system. That's a great idea, El Presidente. Maybe if we had something like that, like a ratings board for software with the purpose of entertainment. Some sort of entertainment software rating board, perhaps. We could call it the ESRB for short. <laughs> Fucking pranic. Armed with a fountain of knowledge and a hatchet job of a video montage, he called a meeting. A meeting. A meeting, I say. Filled with people guaranteed to talk a lot, but say nothing. This round table includes such mental titans as Lieutenant Colonel Dave Grossman, a panicked weirdo who has written books claiming first-person shooters can train children into becoming effective killers. This bewildered old man likes to go on news programs, armed with overtly wild claims or outright bollocks that have been thoroughly disproven by many studies, but Grossy Boy has never let evidence get in the way of his bizarre fantasies, and that's what they are. There's Brent Bozel of the Media Research Center 
Center, a group that wishes to scientifically prove there's a liberal bias in the media and replace all that stuff with their own, well, conservative Christian bias. That just strikes me as a little bit hypocritical. Uh, the white supremacists are American citizens. Uh, the illegal immigrants are people who shouldn't be here. Bozo also once described former President Barack Obama as a skinny ghetto crackhead, in case you were wondering how qualified he is to talk about your kids. Then we have Melissa Henson, a mother. That's it, she's just some kid's mum. As a mum, she represents the Parents Television Council, a huge pusher of unfounded media myths and a utiliser of long discredited studies. The only decent thing the PTC is responsible for is the unwitting creation of the right to censor in WWE, which itself was mostly good because it gave the criminally underrated Stevie Richards a nice little prominent pay-per-view run, which he deserved. The RTC, Vince McMahon's never been subtle, also had some of the best entrance music ever. <laughs> Standing up for the game industry, we have... Oh. The kind of people who are similarly out of touch with real human beings, but nonetheless just happen to fall on the right side of the discussion this time. We have Strauss Zelnick of Take Two, a grasping trend chaser of a publisher that recently committed to putting microtransactions in all of its games. Zenimax CEO Robert Altman, whose board of directors feature the king's own brother Robert Trump, which doesn't look dodgy at all, does it? And ESA CEO Mike Gallagher. The ESA is a lobbying group that regularly asks game-playing citizens like you to fight for them politically. But any who indulge these astroturfing strategies are quickly sold out by a group that has supported internet strangling bills like Sopa and Pippa, as well as the recent tax bill that's designed to benefit nobody except the most absolutely wealthy in the nation. Oh, and Pat Vance of the ESRB was there as well, but since Gonads McDonald believes video games don't have ratings, he must have thought she was a fucking ghost. The round table was a joke from the very beginning. Despite announcing an upcoming meeting with game industry spokespeople, the White House hadn't actually invited anyone. The ESA, to its credit, issued a sensible statement in response though, stating how the same games available in America are played across the world without the same real life consequences, and how there's been no credible evidence suggesting a link between video games and violent actions. It also gave a shout out to the ESRB because that's the ESRB's job, to be a light that political moths may be drawn to. Eventually though, a lacklustre list of milky guests was drawn together and they all grouped up in that Roosevelt room on March 8th. So what happened? at this meeting of the minds, this thunderdome of thought. Did anybody alter their position? Was Vance and Gallagher swayed by the impassioned hand-wringing and appeals to morality produced by Grossman and some kid's mum? Did some kid's mum budge from her position after being told bluntly that no credible scientific evidence backs up her preconceived views? Did our vagina-clawing emperor do anything other than vaguely agree with the last thing he heard while offering zero substantive input? Did anyone walk out of that room with a plan of action, a potential next step, anything resembling even a penciled in roadmap? Or was it just fucking showmanship in an echo chamber that only lent undeserved credibility to an increasingly nonsensical diversionary tactic? What do you fucking think? The meeting went pretty much as expected. Nothing of note actually happened, which is what happened last time game spokespeople were trotted in front of a politician and had a really meaningful discussion that might lead somewhere positive. <sighs> last time, Joe Biden was the one who went in there with preconceived notions about scumbag video games after the Sandy Hook massacre. And he listened to games industry people and he listened to both sides of the argument and as usual, fucking nothing was achieved until the next mass shooting that managed to be media friendly enough to get extended coverage over all the other mass shootings, at which point America performed its well-rehearsed ritual of shock, horror, and half-baked solutions designed to pacify and satisfy an outraged and impotent audience while offering no real answer to the problem. That's pretty much what this meeting and what the decades-long topic of media violence is forged to do. Pacify, subdue, keep the citizenry placid, put on the appearance of doing something about an issue without actually expending the effort and doing something. Have little round tables, talk about the studies, put a convenient media format under the microscope so it can be blamed and demonised, but don't actually do something significant to confront it because that might really piss people off. Just keep blaming it, because having something to blame provides an illusion of activity. If you're blaming something, if you've pinpointed a problem, you must be tackling it, right? If you're having round table discussions with critics and defenders, it must lead somewhere. Somewhere, right? 
Not particularly, no. Not when this is a conversation that's happened before, will happen again, and has neither the capability nor intention of curbing gun violence or video game content. It's just a distraction. A deflection, a sideshow attraction built to keep the magpies at home focused on something innocuous, pointless, and without direction. Because anything other than performative media fear-mongering would be too inconvenient and uncomfortable to confront. Some people, wrong people, believe game industry heads were duty-bound to lend credence to the White House's absurd display by attending because if they didn't, terrible things would happen and they wouldn't be able to stop it. That scenario is highly unlikely because these roundtables are fittingly named. They're circular discussions within a circular topic. They're not intended for action, they're intended for quite the opposite. They're soothing displays masquerading as action while serving the purpose of complete inaction. And it works. It works by massaging the troubled minds of pitchfork-wielding simpletons who believe something must be done. And by something, I mean anything that doesn't change the world at all but makes me feel better about it. It works by throwing Trumpton's base into a confused stupor, unsure of whether to celebrate or denigrate their dear leader's desire, to protect the Second Amendment by threatening the First, and they'll play their own blame game to avoid facing the conflict. It works by making everybody else credit the nonsensical gibberish coming from the mouths of self-serving politicians and watchdogs with serious responses, and it even works on smart asses like me who think we're not taking it seriously, but nonetheless edit together little counterpoint videos and only add more power to the topic rather than diminish the bloody thing because ignoring it is complying with it, but addressing it is acknowledging it as something worth acknowledging, even though though we all deep down know it really isn't, but we're all caught in the same circular trap just going round and round and around and around until the next mass shooting that manages to be media friendly enough to get extended coverage over all the other mass shootings. So we can all engage in this sick sad ritual across a sick sad nation all over a fucking gain. Oh and fuck Marco Rubio the legally bribed conniving little propagandist lick spittle ass. <laughs> if anybody brought up that recent study, since they love studies so much, that claims that uh, mass shooters aren't actually interested in video games. In fact, according to one researcher, 80% of mass shooters don't particularly care for games. But I wonder that for about a second, whether that was brought up, and then I remember that it doesn't really matter. It doesn't... Holy shit, my portal post has come out of its frame. Oh, that sucks. Oh wait, no it hasn't, that was just the reflection of this backdrop in the frame of the portal poster that I've got that's all like signed by Valve people and that. And it was reflecting to make it look like the poster had dipped and then my glasses are all red so that this is a complete tangent that means nothing to you. Let me show you my bedroom here. We got like uh, about eight machine guns in here, we got sword off shotguns, we got M16s, we got handguns all around. <laughs> Anyway, the point is that I'm completely right about this issue, and if you disagree with me on even the tiniest bit, you are factually, objectively wrong. That's why people thank God for me, yeah, and don't thank God for you, no. So do it. Thank God for me. I keep bashing myself in the back of the hat with this. I'm still brilliant though.